Welcome everybody to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. I'm your host David and here I am aboard my Grady White Gulfstream parked under the pole barn today because what I want to show you today is what I do to get ready for an offshore fishing trip, most specifically red snapper since that season is just getting started here in the Panhandle of Florida. What I'm going to go over is the mixture of bottom fishing rigs as well as some rods and reels set up for jigging if we see some other types of fish on the surface or if those red snapper come up to the surface as well. So stay tuned and we'll go over everything you need to know to get ready for an offshore fishing trip. All right, and our first rig is gonna be our main bottom fishing rig. This is what we're gonna set up to be the heaviest and hopefully, you know, pick up some of those bigger red snappers. So what I've got, I've got a Pin 330 GTI. Now this is an older type reel. It's actually been through two hurricanes this was actually my dad's reel, and uh, we found this in the mud um, post Hurricane Katrina. And uh, then I brought it home. It sat in my uh, garage, and uh, we were destroyed by Hurricane Michael. Found it out in the yard again, um, had it cleaned up again. And so, um, you know, it's still going strong. So it works well for this application. And this is a medium heavy type rod. So, what we're going to rig on this one is a standard Carolina rig. And basically a Carolina rig is real simple to rig up. You're gonna take your main line, which this is 40 pound mono. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put an egg sinker on the main line, put a swivel underneath that, and then a length of leader, in this case 60 pound leader, and then a circle hook size 70 on the bottom. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna sink down to the bottom with the weight here and then your leader trailing and that's gonna to go to the bottom, and that'll allow that, um, that if you have live bait, it'll allow that live bait to move around a little bit, and that kind of thing, and it'll kind of just stay off the bottom a little bit. And you can, you can decrease or increase that leader based on the size of how far you want your bait to go away from the leader. And if the fish does, if you do have a live bait, and it's a, you know, kind of a lively one, bigger one, it, it, it can actually have the freedom to move back into that reef if you're not right on it because that egg sinker will not be inhibited by anything. It'll just kind of climb up the main line if you leave enough uh, slack out and uh, that's a benefit as well. So it's a kind of a standard bottom fishing type rig. And so to rig that up, first off, what you're gonna wanna do is take your weight and this is a four ounce sinker. Now we may change this to a six or eight but I always like to go with the smaller size first. That way, um, I found it best if the weight just gets you to the bottom, you don't have that excess weight, um, but you do want something to get to the bottom as well as hold you there. The other reason I like a light weight is sometimes the bigger snappers are suspended above the reef, and obviously a, a, a lighter sinker is gonna sink slower, and you can kind of stop it too as well, but it's gonna sink a little slower. It's giving some of those bigger snappers, you know, a chance to grab it. So that could be changed if we need to. So we're gonna just feed that on our main line. Then our next step is to tie our swivel. Now you do wanna get, you know, a, a type of, of heavier duty type swivel. The last thing you wanna do is get kind of a small swivel and, and then have a failure right here. But what I use for most of my knots, tying the swivels or tying um, line to leader, is I use a uni knot most of the time. And, and how to do that, if you're unfamiliar, is you take your main line, or whatever line you're working with, pass that through the eye of the swivel, or whatever you're tying it to, give yourself some slack of the tag end, and just make you, make you a double length of your line like that. Grab your hook, or in this case swivel and in your left I use my left hand and then if you just make a loop around your hand like this you'll have created a loop now just basically you're gonna just wrap this tag around around those uh, double lines right there three four five I usually use five wraps on monofilament if I'm using braid, I'll go up to seven. Now, once you have that wrap done, you have your loop and then your tag end, and then just slightly pull the tag end, holding on to the hook or the swivel. Now, this is an important part with this uni knot. One of the problems with this uni knot is this 
knot right here, this group of lines right here that's going to form the knot, it's got to slide all the way down to the end or where you want it to stop, but it's not going to stay this far away. The problem with the uni knot is if you make this beginning of your knot too tight, it's going to burn and scrape your line all the way down as it moves, and that could cause a failure. So the best way to do that is to just moisten this. Most people use their saliva. You could grab some water from the, from the ocean if you wanted to, but basically once you have that, now this is not tight, it's not cinched down, then you're just gonna grab your main line as well as your hook or swivel and just pull that to where you want it to stop. Now, if you're going to be using a jig or some sort of artificial, that has some action to it, you may want to stop it at about this spot and then you could grab a pair of pliers and grab your tag in and cinch that knot down and it would essentially make kind of like a loop knot. You would have some freedom of movement right here. But in this case, we're just going to go all the way down to the swivel. So you can just go ahead and pull that down. Once you get it close, you can start kind of working this and getting starting to get this tight. And once you have kind of a, a good uh, tension on your tag, you can go ahead and pull it down and cinch it down the rest of the way. And then all you need to do is just cut your tag in. Since this is going to be, you know, suspended well away from the bait, I'm not going to worry too much about getting this tag in flush with the knot. Sometimes I feel like if you leave a little and then, and then this does with the weight of the fish and the pressure, pull up a little bit, you've got a little bit of a tag as a leeway and your knot won't come undone. So that's a basic uni knot. All right, and so our next step is gonna be tying our, our hook to our leader. Now, speaking of leaders, this is gonna be a 60 pound leader and I've got this at about, um, this is probably close to four, four to five feet or so. You could actually go longer. You, you want a decent length of leader because what the leader is going to serve is it's going to help you from getting cut off mostly from when that fish goes down into the reef. So you want enough leader so that it's the leader that makes contact with that reef or whatever the bottom structure is down there. If the braid, if you're using braid on your um, main line, um, as strong as that is and as light diameter that, as that is, the problem with braid, one little nick on that reef or structure down there will we'll cut that line very easily. This mono is going to hold up a good bit better. If we get out there and we find out we're breaking off on our main line, then what we'll do is we'll probably double this and go maybe up to a 10 foot leader or something like that. Um, and you can even go longer than that. And so attaching our leader to our hook is the same process as attaching our main line to the swivel since I'm using a uni knot. One thing I will do differently, and I'll show you how this is kind of done quickly. One, two, three, four, five. Grab it somewhat tight, get it wet, bring it down. Now, what I'm gonna do a little bit differently is I'm gonna leave that loop there. So what I'm gonna do, once I get it to this point, I'm gonna grab my, my tag in and just start to tighten that down and I can bring this down back a little bit if I want it a little bit closer to the hook. Get it where you want it, and then just go ahead and pull that tag in as tight as you can. Now that's gonna make a little loop. Now, this could, as with the pressure of a big fish, this could slip back down to the hook, but that's not a big deal. I mean, you're still gonna have it nicely unhooked. So if you really wanna tighten this down, you could get another pair of pliers and get it in that hook and just pull it really tight. So there you go, we've got our hook attached to our leader. Now I'm gonna leave the other end just blank with nothing on it, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this up, I'm gonna put it in a little plastic bag, label it what it is, what size leader, what size hook it is, and that way I'll have you know six or eight or 10 or however many I make up in my tackle bag ready to go if I break some off. And then of course on my rod, I've got my weight and my swivel. And I'm just gonna store that like that so that when I get out there, all I need to do is tie my leader and hook combination to my swivel and I'm ready to go. 
and then therefore if I'm breaking off during the day, I can just grab another pre-tied hook and leader and just uh, tie it to this swivel, provided we don't get any break-offs on this mono main line. Okay, and then on rod number two, we're gonna tie a chicken rig, which is often called a double drop rig, which is basically a sinker on the bottom with a, a leader tied up with two hooks above that attached to a swivel. And so we're gonna be putting on this pin GTI 320. Now this is another reel that went through those two hurricanes, a little bit lighter setup. So on the main line, I've got 30 pound mono, and this is a medium heavy rod. So to tie this chicken rig, I'm gonna use 60 pound leader as well. And we're also gonna be tying on a chicken rig on another rod with 40 pound for a little bit smaller fish. So I just use this mono. So what I like to do is start out with my chicken rigs with about two arm lengths. That's gonna be four to five feet. That'll give you plenty of room to work with. All right, so our first step in making this chicken rig is we're gonna start at the bottom with our weight, move up through the two hooks, and then end at the top with our swivel. So the first step is make you a loop in the bottom of the line with about four or so inches of a tag line. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab that and make you a sort of a double overhand knot with this loop. and just pull it tight. You have a nice little loop. Next, take your bank sinker of choice. We're gonna start out with four ounces. You could go up or, or smaller depending on the depth and current. We're gonna start out with four, but this rig setup is gonna be uh, set up so that's very easy to change this weight if you need to. So what you wanna do is take your loop that you made, just pass it through that eye, and then go down under the weight like this and then pull it up like this. Now you also could, instead of having the line wrapped around the base of the weight, you could pull it up of the eye and have it attached like that. Now I've done that before, just thinking that it might hold the weight a little better, but I found it extremely difficult to get that weight off. So if you leave your line underneath the eye like that, I've never had it come off. So that's the way I prefer to do it. Go ahead and take your tag off. No reason to do it flush. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up from the sinker, um, that's about 16 inches maybe. And this is where you're gonna tie your first hook. So the best way to do that is just make you a loop in the line, leave you a, a gap of about that size, and then take, this is the main part of the line, this is the sinker part of the line that formed that loop. You're gonna take your top part of the line that goes to the swivel and just pass it through this loop several times. I do four times. One, two, three, four. Now you've made a little twist. Now what you want to do is with your fingers go through that loop you just made. Grab that bottom part of the loop. Grab it with your teeth and then just slowly pull out on the two lines and cinch it down and you've made yourself a loop. Now you can make this loop bigger or smaller just depending on how big you make your initial wrap. Then you can take your hook. This is a seven off hook. Make you a little pinch. Helps a little bit to get through the eye. I always go through this part of the eye, the eye that faces the hook. Um, it tends to kind of roll the hook in and I don't know if that does anything or not, but it might grab the fish better. Pass it through the eye and then up under the hook. All the way through the hook. And just like you did the sinker, you're going to pull the line up under the eye. And you've got number one hook done. Following that up, go another, you can go a little closer this time, probably 12 inches. Make your loop again. Take your top part of your line and wrap it around, one, two, three, four. With your fingers, go through that loop, grab the bottom part of that loop, grab what you just pulled through with your teeth, and then slowly pull, and there you go, you got another loop. Very easy. 
you can buy these pre-made but you can see how easy these are to make when you make them yourself you can have your choice of hooks your choice of leader weight so there we go with our hook we're going to go through this part of the eye to make that little pinch a little smaller and through the hook or around the hook pull it up you've got your hook now on the top all we have to do is just add our swivel and the swivel I'm using this is just a 200 pound test barrel swivel and we're going to tie it just like we did for our Carolina rig we're just going to loop it around and we're going to make a uni knot and there you go we have our chicken rig starting with our swivel at the top our hook number one our hook number two and our loop for our weight now I don't leave the weight attached um, what I do is I'm gonna wrap this up just like I did a Carolina rig wrap it up put it in a Ziploc bag by itself so these hooks don't get tangled up with other hooks and label it and put them all together so I know what I've got as far as hook size and leader weight um, and ready to go out on the water now on our next rod I've already pre tied it and this is the same process but this is another chicken rig this is just a 40 pound test and four out circle hooks and what I've got this on this is a spinning outfit so this is a battle 5000 and this is a Talus PX medium rod now what I've got this primarily for is sometimes when we get out to the reef I'll drop this actually first and that'll help me kind of identify what fish are there um, these smaller hooks can very well pull up a Tom Tate or some sort of bait fish that's down there that would be something we could use on our Carolina rig setup. So that's often a good way to fill the live well with your bait that you need for the other rods, as well as, you know, this will grab some smaller snappers as well as a big snapper, but you do have a smaller uh, leader material um, to work with, so you have to be careful. But that's gonna be our rod number three. So the next thing I like to set up is a vertical jig rig. And so what I've got on this is, this is a pin 209 level wind. There again, one of the hurricane uh, reels again. This is a medium heavy rod, not necessarily a jigging rod, uh, but it works. And this is a 30 pound test on this reel. So what I like to do is, is I don't really tie these up ahead of, ahead of time. I keep them in my tackle bag. So some of the ones that we're going to be using um, are these typical kind of slow pitch jigs. We have various uh, colors and sizes um, with the different um, weights. This is 168 gram um, and we have some that are a little bit smaller. And so we'll tie those up as we get out there. Um, we also have more of the bucktail type jigs um, as well as um, another type of bucktail. I've not tried this yet, but it's got a little bit... Uh, flat head and so when it falls it's going to fall a little bit slower which will be kind of nice so we might give that a try so i've got several of those and that's what that rod and reel setup is over there is going to be for and how we're going to rig it onto the rod we've gone gone ahead and put our swivel on it and then we're going to attach a uh, 60 pound leader to that as well and we do have 80 pound uh, mono on board too if we find out that 60 is not big enough we can always switch to an 80. So we'll tie that leader onto our swivel and then to the other side to the jig. There again, um, probably using, you know, five to 10 feet of leader. Um, more so a longer length on our vertical jig um, because that's probably gonna be closer to our reef and uh, that's more likely to get, in, get into those reefs. All right, and our final two reels are gonna be both spinning reels. One's going to be a heavier battle 5000 um, with a Talus PX medium spinning rod. And then we're also going to have a lighter outfit. This is an inshore uh, spinning rod setup. This is a Stratic 4000 with a St. Croix uh, medium heavy seven foot rod. And what we're going to use these for is if we see some fish on the surface. If we have some chum set out, we may very well bring up some red snappers to the surface. And we want to have something ready in case we see them. So we've got our heavier rod for that kind of setup. But if we also see some mangrove snappers, um, we, we have our lighter rig set up as well. But what I'm gonna start out with is this imitation shrimp with a quarter ounce jig head. But you could start out with a paddle tail or a gotcha plug or a 
Rapala X wrap or something similar. And to tie a double uni knot, and to get these jigs set up for both of these setups, I'm gonna start out with a length of leader. Now, this is gonna be for our bigger setup, so I'm gonna use a 60 pound leader. So I use about, you know, a double arm's length. And really the first step for your double uni knot is to lay these lines on top of each other. So I've got my main line braid here, and I've got my leader on this side. And so what you're gonna basically do is do a uni knot on this side, flip it around and do a uni knot on that side and pull them together. So it's the same process as we did with the uni knot with the swivel. So basically I'm gonna start out with my leader side first. And I'm just gonna do the standard five wraps since this is mono. Three, four, five. And I'm gonna pull that but I'm not gonna pull it tight. This is an important step that you don't pull that leader line real tight. And you'll see why in just a second. And then what I do, once I've got this like this, then I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing with your braid. But this is braid, so I'm gonna go seven wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can go ahead and pull that one tight. All right, so once you've got your braid uni knot done, you've got your leader knot over here and your braid knot over here. Now those need to come together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get it wet again. Grab your main line, grab your leader, and just slowly pull them together until they touch. Now this is an important step right here. Once they touch, you want to go ahead and grab your pliers and take your tag end of your leader that's thicker and tighten it down a little bit. If you don't, um, this uni knot will slide up into your uni knot done with your leader and that'll kind of mess the whole process up. So go ahead and tighten that down a little bit, holding your leader and then your tag end with your pliers and then you can pull those tight a little bit more. That's essentially it. Once you get that done, I always kind of like to go ahead and get a real good tight uh, uni knot with my leader. Since it's a little harder to get tight, you got to force it a little bit. The braid is going to cinch down very easily. So that is your double uni attaching your braid to your leader. Then go ahead and cut your tags off. You're good to go. All right, so that's how we attach our leader to our braid. Now the jig we're gonna use on this heavier uh, spinning rod setup, we're gonna use this ounce spro jig. Um, and the way we're gonna attach that to our leader is, a, is there again with our uni. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop our knot so that it's not cinched to the eye. We wanna have a little bit of a loop in it. Now, of course, you could do a loop knot or, or any type of knot that you're familiar with that leaves you with a little loop there. And the reason you want to do that is just going to give the jig a little bit more play and a little more action than if that knot was cinched down. Uni knot is what I'm most familiar with. I found it to be very useful in all these different situations um, if, you, if you tie them a little different for these different applications. So we're gonna go ahead and get that tied up. And there you go, there's your uni knot left with that little loop at the end. So I hope these things today will help you get prepared for your next offshore trip. If you enjoyed this episode, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment and hit that like button. And until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.